So I've been working on the shot list for Changelings, and I thought that uh, this would be a good opportunity to talk about how I think about composing shots and shot lists as director of a film. Let's go. Hey everybody, thanks for coming back to Distant Signal and welcome to another video. This is the seventh video in the 90 video series, the 90 day marathon for Changelings, where I'm just gonna talk about everything that I am doing to create the short film in the run up to the crowdfunding, which is gonna begin April 21st. And today I wanted to talk about how I go about thinking about my shot lists and what I use or what, what questions I ask myself uh, to guide myself through uh, creating a scene visually. This is not a comprehensive list, but these are some of the guiding questions that I do ask myself as I am reading a scene and when I'm considering how I'm going to break things down visually. First, I ask myself what the scene is about. Now, it could be as simple as making a sandwich. This scene is about making a sandwich. You just have to be able to answer that question. If you can't answer what the scene is about or why it belongs in a script, that might be a, your first clue that maybe the scene doesn't belong there and maybe it's worth cutting. You have limited time when you're shooting something, so when you're reading a scene, the first thing I ask is, what the hell is the scene about? And if I can't answer that question, and if the writer really can't answer that question, if I'm not the writer, well then there's a good chance the scene doesn't belong there. So that's always a good question to ask yourself first when you're creating a shot list, uh, because creating a shot list, just like location scouting, reveals story, uh, story information that you might or might not need, and it allows you to refine the direction that you're going with your stories. If I can determine what this scene's about, then I go about asking myself, whose scene is it? What I'm really asking myself is, who is driving the scene forward? And who or what is working against our character in the moment in that scene? Because as we know, story is drama, drama is story, so on and so forth. And then I ask myself, what information do I need to convey? What information needs to be conveyed for, you know, for this scene to work? So if it's just about getting lunch, if it's just about making a sandwich, you know, there are, are probably a series of shots that you, you could probably expect in the scene. Close-up of bread, close-up of sandwich, close-up of uh, mayonnaise, close-up of nice spreading mayonnaise. But, there's, but so far, there's nothing really happening in the scene, just somebody making a sandwich. So if in the scene there is somebody who's working against that person, I then try to figure out from whose perspective are we telling the story. So if there's a guy making a sandwich, but the sister is in the room and she wants what he's making with the sandwich, if one person wants a sandwich and one person wants to take the sandwich, then we know that you know, we have some conflict and we, we then can begin to shape the scene out by determining whose perspective on, of the scene that we're following. Uh, so if it's about a guy making a sandwich and he's starving, like literally starving. You know, if the if the main character is the guy making the sandwich, and we're the one that you know he's the one that we're rooting for, then that's the perspective of the scene, at least in this particular scene. And so this allows me to to get really granular into what the story, you know, how to shape this story. So now that we've answered these questions, we know what the scene is about. We know that it belongs in the script. We know whose perspective it's from. We have a general idea that's sort of forming that we need some kind of coverage to at least have the basic amount of information necessary to know where we are, who's in the scene, what they're doing. So now that we've got this little scene taking shape, I then have to ask myself, how am I going to reveal all this information? Right, so now that we know all these things, who, what, when, where, why, effectively, and that we're able to convey that somewhat visually, or at least we have, a, we have an idea, like if it's in a kitchen, we, we sort of know the constraints that are gonna be placed on the scene. And after I've answered what information I need, I need to convey in the scene, I can then begin to build the shot list. When I think about creating a shot list, and I've, after I've been able to answer all those questions, that allows me to think about how I'm going to reveal the necessary information in the scene. So that allows me to begin to be able to break down the scene into tiny little granular parts where I can build the scene up bigger by pieces. It's important to ask myself, what information I'm, am I going to be revealing from moment to moment? And how can I make the most impact with that, with that revelation? So if, the, if what I want to reveal is that our main character is making a sandwich and that's what the scene is about, maybe I start on the close-up close of the sandwich. But maybe, just maybe, it isn't about that at all. Maybe the scene is really about how much the sister hates the brother. So maybe we start on her face, a close-up of her looking, scowling at somebody, and then we cut to the sandwich. So then we know that she wants a sandwich, but we know that it's not her making the sandwich. So who's making the sandwich? cut to brother, right? Cut to his face. He's kind of got a smile on his face and he looks at the sister and she looks even more pissed and he makes a nice sandwich 
and then takes the sandwich and then we cut to the garbage sandwich goes in the trash and then we cut back to her we only took a few shots to really get a sense that the brother is probably antagonizing the sister by making a sandwich and throwing it out and that his whole intention was to waste the food you know the whole time this scene's really about a brother antagonizing his sister i think you can see that as you think about how the scene will be constructed changes the perspective of who the scene is about and because you've changed the perspective that changes the order and the nature of the shots as you come up with them if it's just a wide shot you know, that's a that that is another tactic you can take where you sort of treat a scene like a play and you really use blocking to tell the story visually uh, that's a whole different kind of uh, this is a very different kind of method you know the way that i'm thinking about film the way that i think about telling a narrative story is is more in pieces like how do we reveal information slowly because if you if you rely on the reveal you get really good at it it really gives you or really puts you the filmmaker in control of the scene the film is really dependent upon your perspective and how you are going to uh, just met out that little those little pieces of information in order to control the narrative so by thinking about so so when i think about creating shot lists I think about reveals because reveals allow me to control exactly what I want the audience to see and when and how. So it helps you as the filmmaker keep control. And by, by control, I mean control of the audience's emotions because that's really, that's really you know, why you're making this film is to manipulate the audience to feel a certain way based on the story that you're crafting, using the visuals to create you know, a synergy between music and sound and, and, and picture in order to evoke a feeling. So... It does, you know, this kind of way of thinking about it reveals and whatnot, at least the way that I see filmmaking, it, it gives the filmmaker a lot of control. So that's how I think of creating a shot list. I, I always ask myself those things. Uh, I always ask myself those questions, and that allows me to break the scene down in a way uh, that is could, that, that conveys information bit by bit, because that's sort of how I like to do things. I don't like to use a lot of... Another thing that I'm asking when I'm creating a shot list is why this shot like how is this shot going to fit in the edit later it can't just be a shot because it looks cool right there's there's has to there doesn't have to be it's art you can do it you can do whatever the hell you want but i think if you're going to tell a very structured narrative that relies on a linear time in order to tell the story it's important to know where the pieces are going to fit and how they fit in there and so you have to ask yourself why this shot why am i why am i composing the shot in this way why am i using a tilt why am I revealing it this way? Why am I using a pan? Why am I using a dolly? Why am I ending on this close-up? So it can't just be a cool shot for the sake of a cool shot. I think a film that embodies this kind of um, haphazard filmmaking was a film that just came out called Polar. The film sort of vacillates between two, two different storylines. First is the main character. It's, it's very indie looking. It's very contrast you kind of gray it feels like a very intimate indie film and the next scene uh it's popping with color lots of wide shots the, there does the, the shot choices appear to be quite arbitrary i don't know why why the sequence of shots are occurring in the way that they're occurring they're not revealing anything interesting from moment to moment i feel like that these questions weren't ever asked like I, I definitely when i'm watching that film i definitely i feel like i don't know who the perspective of the film. Um, I, I'm not really sure whose scene each scene is supposed to be for, especially the scenes that are super colorful. It, it seems very, it just, the whole thing seems, those bits seem really, really messy because I feel like the question, like, whose scene is this scene about, didn't really get answered very well. And why each shot was chosen, it just felt very arbitrary. And that, for me, just really pulls me out of the picture. I start asking myself these questions. Why did he do this? Why? Why block it that way? It seemed like it just seemed out of place. And maybe that's just a matter of taste, but when these questions seem to be ignored, I begin to lose interest in the film because the filmmaker is not carrying me through the scene from moment to moment, you know, telling me what is important in a way that is interesting, that keeps my attention. And a reveal is a good way of doing that because from second to second, you're, the audience you know, is going to be asking, what am I going to learn next? And I think that's what's really cool about film is that from moment to moment, the, the audience is, is curious as to what's going to happen next. And if you just do wide shots or the shots seem arbitrary or the shots aren't detailed enough to convey the necessary information, uh, the audience gets lost. I get a little lost and I get bored. Obviously, you don't want to overdo it. I think 
Um, you could you could go really crazy revealing information. Um, the, the the technique that comes to mind is a lot of rapid cutting to reveal bits of very 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 tiny chunks of information that can be really effective, but it, it, it could, it's, it's a technique I think it has to be used quite sparingly because it's very jarring. When I think about creating shot lists, those are the questions that I ask myself, and I, I hope that you find this information helpful if you're constructing a scene and you're not really sure where to go with it or how to start, what shot to start with. If you ask yourself those questions, you'll get a lot closer to knowing and understanding not only the scene, but how you're going to proceed in making that scene and revealing to the audience what you want them to see so that they feel how you want them to feel. Because that's all you really are as a director and a writer is a, a magician of feelings, if you will. Uh, so that's it. I uh, hope you have a great night, guys. Keep an eye out tomorrow for episode number eight here of the 90 Day Marathon for Changelings. Check me out on Bitbacker and Steam. You know, let me know if you're a director or if you're a writer, you know, let me know how you like to reveal information to your audience. Uh, do you find that these questions are, are questions that you ask yourself? And uh, do you have any suggestions for me or for anybody who might have watched this video uh, to help make their scenes, uh, to, to help make their shot lists more effective and interesting? All right, guys, have a great night. Fill out. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do here, hit that subscribe button, find me on Steam, and support me on Bitbacker. For only $2 a month worth of Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash, you'll get exclusive content, early access to everything I do, and access to my private Telegram channel, where you can ask me any question you like about the process of making changelings with cryptocurrency. All right, see you there.